Hey there, and this is a contest entry to uh, a really great YouTuber by the name of Dr. Haslam. And uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, check it out. Sub, like, you're definitely going to have sub. Trust me on this guy. Uh, I was going to do this contest entry a, a while back when I first saw it. I was probably one of the first persons to watch this contest entry video. But uh, I have uh, been doing a lot of videos and there's been a lot of studying. And then I couldn't find the entry, and I recently somebody posted an entry. I'm like, yes, perfect link. Uh, what's happening when you got a lot of uh, uh, you subscribe to a lot of people that you watch? Anyway, great contest, uh, great prizes. Uh, fingers crossed on the Halloween. Uh, but here we go. Doctor Haslam's three questions. What is your favorite film trilogy and why? I really thought about this one a lot, and this was one of the reasons I didn't answer right away, because you asked three great questions that I wanted to think about. And a lot of times I will come in here off the top of my head and just give the answers. And I had answers, you know, pat answers, and then I said, no, I didn't like them that much, and I wanted to go. And so at the end of it, I ended up going off the top of my head anyway. So here we go. My favorite film trilogy. It's uh, it's still a trilogy today at this point. A lot of film trilogies, if you notice, have, are no longer trilogies. Well, Indiana Jones was a trilogy, now it's a quadrology. Uh, there's six Star Wars films, uh, broken up into two trilogies. One that's good, one that's not. Uh, but for me, and not a lot of people are probably going to say this one, uh, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, Evil Dead. Uh, three great films. Uh vastly different each one was and uh you've got the first film which is a really cool horror film uh very indie very uh very creepy very you know does the scares really well you've got number two you've got the, some kind of like cool humor into it goes into more of a works with the more uh more, more camera angles more uh cinematography is like it's up it, it yams it up a lot there and there's a lot of really cool stuff. There are a lot of Three Stooges references and stuff like that. And then you got number three, Army Darkness. It's out and out, pretty much like a comedy action film. The horror aspects are pretty much all, you know, all really gone. They have any serious horror aspects that have, that have been left over from part two are gone now. Uh, it's, it truly is the story of Ash. Uh, it goes, you know, it gives you it gives you a beginning, middle, end. Even gives you another beginning, sort of in the uh, second in, in the second one. But I loved. Sorry, but this is my first tea of holiday. Uh, loved the Evil Dead trilogy. Loved, loved, loved the Evil Dead trilogy. So that is definitely my answer. Uh, just watch. I'll get off here and be like, oh man, there's this other trilogy I thought of. But no, Evil Dead. I love Evil Dead. What is the movie that you think defines the 1980s? This was the hardest question. I'm an 80s child. And uh, I am the definition of an 80s kid. What defines the 1980s? Uh, I thought about a lot of qu a lot of answers. You could have went. I could have went along the John Hughes ways and said Breakfast Club, which is definitely a strong definition. I could have went with uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, uh, or I could have went blockbusterish with something like Back to the Future. But you know what I went with? I decided to go with something a little bit different, and I'll explain why. Because it's going to seem like an unusual answer, and it's Fright Night. Friday Night is a movie done in the mid '80s that uh, starred Williams Ragsdale um, and uh, Roddy McDowell, and of course uh, the great Stephen Jeffries as a uh, Yulette. We're talking about the original Friday Night here, of course. Why does it define the '80s? <clears throat> the '80s, as a horror fan, uh, the '80s made me more of a horror fan than anything else could. The '80s were a time was a time that horror really blossomed, it came into its own. Horror fandom really exploded in the 80s. Horror films were big, but uh, that's not the only reason. Uh, I do think the 80s are defined in, in many cases by the horror and stuff and stuff, but it's also a time when music, soundtracks were very popular, and Fright Night had a great soundtrack, it had a great theme song uh, done by Jay Giles Band, and uh, it's in my head again now, I won't be able to get it for weeks. It would also later spin off into a comic because it was, it was the start of the whole multimedia 
aspect of the the yeah that was again another part of the uh, by the com by the way the comic was done by now a company called now who did a bunch of comics like Terminator and Robocop and stuff like that it's also a movie that uh started utilizing uh like uh, different actors back into uh you know like these like the eighties did with the, a lot of the uh, slasher films Ben Johnson Terra Train Robert McDowell and Fright Night uh started utilizing a lot of the older actors again uh bringing them back into the into the limelight a little. And Ron McDowell did this best with his character role. It, uh, re, like the thing would do, it, in, you know, in revamping the, uh, the modern day monster film of the 80s, uh, Fright Night revamped the modern day hammer horror vampire film, uh, that it kind of lampooned. And, uh, it was just an incredibly well done film. It's all, it is very 80s that, hairstyle the clothes, uh, Man of Bears, for instance, uh, very 80s look to it, but uh, it's still, uh, for me, it's timeless uh, today, and I'm not sure if it's timeless for people that didn't grow up in the 80s. Uh, let me know, guys, but if uh, if you didn't grow up in the 80s, and uh, what do you think of the original Terror, of the original Terror, of the original Fright Night? Fright Night, I thought, was a fantastic, fantastic film. Uh, that's, my, that's my answer. And uh, third question, what's my favorite sequel to a horror film? Oh, you don't make these easy. Uh, my favorite uh, sequel to a horror film. It's not Fright Night 2. I'll tell you that much right now. It's not Fright Night 2. Hmm. Maybe I should have thought of these, uh, the answers before we went on here, but I wanted to do something kind of uh, different. Not different for me, but, you know, I do this all the do these off-the-car things, but what do I want to say? There's so many good ones. I mean, I could go with, like, Friday the 13th 4 with Joseph Zito directing. Or, uh, I could go with, uh, just to piss people off, I could go with Texas Chainsaw or something like that. But I don't think it's the best one. Uh, best. Favorite sequel. Favorite sequel to a horror film. I'm going to go back to my childhood. One of my favorite uh, sequels to a horror film was uh, one that uh, doesn't get a lot of cred nowadays. And uh, actual, in actuality, the uh, the lead actor didn't do any lines in the movie because he thought the lines that were written were atrocious. And uh, I don't know what's my favorite sequel to a horror film, but it's the one that I can think of now, and I really wanted to do something different. I didn't want to say Friday or Nightmare or any of those wanted to pick a different franchise to go with. So, uh, Dracula Prince of Darkness. The uh, sequel to uh, Horror of Dracula, or just Dracula over in England. Uh, I really loved Dracula Prince of Darkness. I thought it was a really cool concept. I liked the visual aspect of it. I even dug the kind of like uh, the brook thing, the water, the monk shooting. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, to this day, it's one of those movies that just... I, I don't own it yet. i got to get it. It's on Blu-ray now. Is one of those uh, childhood memory moments, and uh, Dracula Prince of Darkness was like one of those films that I watched over and over again. And I guess I didn't think of it as in terms of it being a sequel back then, but it was a sequel, and I loved uh, Horror of Dracula. That was the uh, you know as I loved them all the uh, I love the Hammer films. I'm a huge Hammer fan, and uh, favorite sequel to a horror film, Dracula Prince of Darkness. Uh, probably can think of a dozen more that could fit in with that because I'm a huge horror fan uh, but I loved Track the Prince of Darkness thanks for watching it's 4 o'clock in the morning here so uh, I gotta drink this and I get some sleep because I got my review tomorrow before I uh, have to finish up the last bits of my paper and then I have to do a uh, I have to do uh, my studying for my test. So, you may not see me on it tomorrow, but who knows if I need a break, you probably will. If you have not subscribed to Dr. Haslund's channel, get over there, subscribe to it. Awesome channel, awesome videos. And uh, just so you know, guys, because I like to do this, uh, the last video that he put out was the contest reminder which uh, closes on Friday. 
but he's got some great stuff like uh, the oh, which I haven't one I haven't seen yet. He's got a review for uh, the movie Blood Simple, and I love the movie Blood Simple, so I really want to check that out. So uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out Doctor Aslan's, he's got some great, great stuff here. Some great reviews, uh, some cool e e reviews like he shows the the pop vinyl figures as well. They got yeah the Planet of the Apes ones, which look freaking sweet, and uh, just some general really cool stuff. If you haven't checked him out, seriously check him out. I it this is a shout out as well as a contest entry because uh, I don't get them shouted out as enough in my video ones, and I can't, I'm not sure why. Uh, I watch a lot of his stuff all the time. Anyway, Prisoner of Block H. Ooh, that's the only box set that's bigger than my uh, Dark Shadows one. I gotta see if that's worth getting. Thanks for watching, guys. And for me right now, I'm gonna go watch some of these videos. And uh, it's time for tea.